The the men in black have uh, have a fairly long and storied history throughout the uh, UFO phenomenon in the UFO community, and there, there's very various different angles uh, on who the men in black are and what possible organization they represent and what they may want. Now I got a, a, a various clips here, Cretchen, uh, that I will. Uh, I will do my best to run through and describe. So I'm not going to be, uh, these are all audio clips. And so I'm probably going to turn over the screen to you, Cratchit. So you'll have a, a full run, full, you just run rampant over there, full screen with the, the gifts and everything you need to do. Okay. There you go. All right. I know this is the, the Cratchit show on YouTube, but I'll be playing the audio clips here. Um, a lot of these, these audio clips are going to run the gamut on um, uh, men in black enca- encounters, UFOs, some, some cryptozoological stuff. And I'll do my best to describe uh, everything that's going on here. So this first clip is from the Maury Island incident, which took place in 1947, which by all accounts is the first recorded encounter with a UFO witness and uh, a man in black. Um, So I'll play this here and uh, kind of talk about it a little bit afterwards. So here we go. Two Harbor Patrolmen, Harold Dahl and Fred Chrisman, were on a work boat when they observed unusual saucer-shaped aircraft in the sky. What is that thing? Think we ought to call it in? What are we going to say it is? One of these objects was maneuvering in a very erratic and strange fashion. And it suddenly exploded in the sky, showering all this strange wreckage down into the harbor. One of those objects dropped something down onto the ship, which actually killed a dog. According to Chrisman and Dahl, after they returned to port, Events got even stranger. Gentlemen, perhaps you've seen the weather balloon? Balloon? It was a random weather balloon test. Hey, man, there was an explosion. Easy mistake. Easy mistake? Nothing to be concerned about. Dahl was approached by a real man in black and he was threatened with his life, his family's life was threatened. You will not speak of this to anyone. Making it very, very clear that under no circumstances should he talk about this encounter. You don't want to alarm anyone, do you? This particular case is important because this was the very first man in black encounter in which a witness was threatened after having seen a UFO. So the whole Maury Island incident is fairly incredible. Um, this was actually a UFO encounter or observation before the famous Kenneth Arnold uh, flying disc uh, incident that t- took place by, uh, I think, right near Mount Rainier. So as we heard there, uh, Harold Dahl was the witness, and the men in black came to him. And said, if you love your family, you'd keep quiet about this. And uh, this was written about in a book called Flying Saucers on the Attack. And uh, there's other var- various uh, uh, men in black stories in there. But Dahl was later questioned by two Air Force intelligence officers, Frank Brown and William Davidson, uh, when they set off back to their air, pa- uh, air base. The plane crashed and they were killed. And then two days later, Kenneth Arnold had, um, who was also investigating that affair, was flying home when his engines cut out and he was forced to crash land. So Kenneth Arnold appearing again in the UFO folklore and phenomenon. I mean, you, I mean Kenneth Arnold did not see the, the flying disc that day. He was just investigating. And I think that um, David Politis of Missing 411 during his research uh, in and around Mount Rainier, uh, claimed that Kenneth Arnold, while he was in the air and observed the flying disks, uh, he was out there searching for missing people 
on Mount Rainier, a missing military exercise. And um, so while he was out searching for missing people, that's when he came across and observed those flying discs. Um, so interesting right there. Um, the next few clips I have are of uh, Stan Gordon and what Stan Gordon encountered in the 1970s. Stan Gordon, prolific UFO researcher, cryptid researcher, uh, focused a lot in uh, Pennsylvania. You can read the book Silent Invasion. It's just uh, filled with uh, really interesting encounters. Um, there's a huge UFO and, and crypto flap from the, I believe, the late 60s to the mid-70s. And then it kind of trailed off a little bit, at least by all accounts, but they pop up every now and again. So in uh, in in this clip here, um, this is Stan. And um, what happened in 1973, in August, this creature, and that, that's what it is this, it's described as, as the creature. The creature. The, cr- the creature visited a trailer park and was harassing uh, a mother and her children. The creature. It was like standing outside her trailer park or tra- her trailer and uh, making a huge racket, high pitched squealing. And by all the reports, according to uh, what some of the police on the, the, uh, the, the, on the scene said and what she said, it, it appeared that it was uh, tinkering around with the electricity. The creature. I don't, know if the, I don't know if the creature was certified to do any sort of HVAC technician or anything like that, but it was definitely messing around with the, te- uh, the, the electricity. And she reported this. She reported this to the police. She was uh, scared, frightened. And she also contacted Stan Gordon to come out and help explain what the heck is going around, uh, going on around the trailer park. And I have this clip that speaks to what she had to go through afterwards. The woman's screams drew the attention of neighbors, who immediately called the police. Hey, we've got a pretty big. And when the police get out there, they find what appeared to be some footprints that are very unusual. Even more unusual, the men in black that arrived soon after. Later that night, Stan Gordon received an urgent call. I'm on the line and the operator breaks in with an emergency call. Hello? And the emergency call happened to be from the woman who lived in that mobile home she said, someone came to my home. Stan? There's this man here wanted to talk to her about seeing the creature that night. Did the creature leave any evidence? Something on the doorknob. Stan told me to keep it. Who? He said he was with you. He indicated that he knew me. I work with Stan. Which, of course, that wasn't the case. It's okay to give it to me. And if she gave him the samples, he would get them to me. You never knew when the men in black were going to show up, and you never knew how they got their information. (gasps) He took the sample? He took everything. He's not with us. I'm sorry. So Stan was pretty angry that she gave over the the monster goo to the men in black. She was scared, and uh, she willfully handed over the the monster goo. Demon sperm. It could have been demon sperm. Don't know, um, but there was definitely some sort of like ectoplasm. I mean, that's what I imagine in my head. Some sort of like Ghostbusters kind of ectoplasm. And from what was conveyed through that reenactment, it appeared it was on the doorknob. So the creature was trying to make some sort of entrance into the the trailer, but the doorknob stopped the creature. The creature. And maybe it didn't sure? know how to operate. Are, are, are we sure this was the creature and not, you know, Bill Cosby or somebody? I don't you know. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Bill Cosby. There was no reports um, of Bill, Cl- Bill Cosby having glowing red eyes or glowing eyes in general. At least not that we know of. But I, I did pick up this little tidbit from that clip. Did the creature leave any evidence? I got the creature. I like that one. Did the creature leave any evidence? The creature. 
Um, and so you have reports of men in black showing up. And they seem to have an immense amount of ability to intimidate people, intimidate witnesses, to exhort, uh, exert some sort of psychological pressure over these witnesses to where they want to conform with the men in black's wishes. Uh, there have been reports that a lot of people who encounter the men in black, they feel like a sense of dread. They also uh, feel very uneasy and some of some uh, witnesses report that they uh, seem to lose a sense of willpower or a sense of will as though they are under some sort of hypnotic suggestion or very easily hypnotized. That's a fairly common trait with a lot of these uh, men in black in, uh, men in black uh, encounters. Now, it goes uh, a, a little crazy here, uh, even more so, I know. But I can play a longer clip here. I, it's five minutes, but I'll, maybe I'll just recount it. Is that um, in 1973, in October, there was um, a UFO sighting in, in around Uniontown, Pennsylvania. And uh, this guy was hanging out with, I, I think, two younger younger, uh, younger kids, one of which is, uh, I think, his son, uh, two 10-year-olds. And this guy saw two large creatures walking along uh, a, fence, a fencing area on, on and close to his property. So he, he took out his rifle, cracked off a tracer round to it. He said the tracer round went straight through it. It, it appeared to do absolutely no damage to the creature. So he loaded... Just a full metal jacket, boom, popped off another one, and it did no damage. None, none that he could tell. Those two creatures retreated back into the woods, uh, and then he, he saw, they saw a saucer take off. And these creatures were uh, much taller. He said anywhere from six to possibly eight feet tall, glowing eyes as well. Not unlike the, the creature uh, description from the trailer park that we just talked about. Um, soon afterwards, the, the men in black, uh, showed up and, uh, were basically harassing him to shut the hell up. It's not worth it. Um, he said, he said that these men in black, uh, black hat, a, a co cloak carrying, uh, something like a sickle. And they, they conveyed to him, if you don't straighten up, the end will come soon. And, um, I guess this guy was plagued by, all these uh, visions and, and weird dreams afterwards, and he was just very uncomfortable uh, about the whole situation and just kind of wanted to uh, not dwell on it too much. But uh, uh, very fascinating because uh, I'm always curious when people, they encounter the paranormal, they, they encounter a cryptid, and they manage to crack off a few shots. And I, it, uh, the guy had, uh, I guess, enough you know, sense about him to say, hey, look at that over there. I think I want to shoot it. And he tried a couple times, and it did nothing. The creatures were, uh, the creatures prevailed in that instance. So the, the next uh, clip I have is also from, in a, I guess it's, there's like this little hub, you know, uh, where Ohio and West Virginia and kind of Pennsylvania all meet, you know. Um, and in that area, there's been a lot of UFO encrypted encounters and stories. This next one is uh, a pretty famous one in the UFO community. It is of a, a sewing a sewing machine machine salesman who's traveling from Ohio back to Parkersburg, West Virginia, when he is confronted by a man in black or some sort of UFO alien kind of guy. So I'll play this. Somehow Woody was hearing the grinning man speak. And so I'll, I'll preface this. So what happened? This UFO lands down in front of Woody's truck. He was, he was out on the road selling sewing machines, as anybody did back in the 60s or 70s, for that matter. This UFO, boom. Came over to the top of his car, landed down right in front of him. He stops his truck and says, hey, what the hell is going on around here? This taller, slender man 
gets out of this UFO, kind of dressed in black, and he is grinning. He walks over to Woody's car, tells Woody to roll down his window, and they start having a conversation. Somehow, Woody was hearing the grinning man speak. And uh, as far as I understand, this was all mental. There were no spoken words that came from him. Uh, I I knew what he was asking me. And that's what scared Dad first, because he couldn't understand how he's hearing words. This man is talking, but he's not opening his mouth. And he told my father that uh, he was a type of a scout. He told me that that he was a searcher. A searcher? A searcher. So there's one little uh, clip there about that. Now, this guy, uh, Woodrow, uh, he went on the radio. He went, he went to the media like the day after. He was terrified about this encounter. Um, he said he was getting telepathic communication from this this guy, uh, this man in black, possibly alien. And this uh, alien's name, uh, he asked, was in- Ingrid Cole. Cold. C-O-L-D. Ingrid Cold. And they just had like this, like, this conversation uh, telepathically. Well, I guess it was a one-sided conversation because Mr. Cold was asking questions about uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia. Did uh, did uh, Woodrow have a family? Uh, what did he do? Did, how did he earn? How did he take care of his family? Uh, do you work in Parkersburg? Is that what you have to do? And so uh, Woodrow's just kind of answering his questions. The only question that uh, Woodrow managed to fire off was, "Hey, what, you got a name?" And he answered, "Yeah." But Mister Cold uh, conveyed that, "Hey, you know, we're going to be back. You know, we're going to be uh, back in a big way, and we're going to be visiting you." and your family. And I believe they made good on that. But I got a longer clip here uh, concerning this encounter. One night in 1987, in Lincoln, Nebraska, Reverend Boche and two colleagues were researching accounts of men... Oh, I'm sorry. That's a, a different clip right there. Um, let me see here. I have... Oh, this is the clip I was looking for. Sorry, people. Here we go. As soon as I had stopped, there was a door opened in the side of this vehicle. And this man stepped out and came directly to me, or came to the truck. He walked to the right-hand side of the truck, and he told me to roll down the window. He asked me to roll down the window on my right-hand side of my truck. And I had done what he asked. And this man stood there, and he, uh, he first asked me what I was called. And I knew he meant my name, and I told him my name. And uh, he asked me, he said, uh, why are you frightened? He said, don't be frightened. We wish you no harm. He said, we mean you no harm. We wish you only happiness. And uh, I told him my name, and when I told him my name, he said he was called Cold. That was the name that he was called by. And he asked me what the city of Parkinsburg, he pointed to the lights. He didn't point but he gave the impression that he was pointing and he asked me what that was called. And I told him it was a Parkersburg, it was a city, a town. And he asked me if most all the people lived in this city or town. And I explained to him uh, that it was a place of business, it's where we transacted our business, that the people lived in communities, outlying communities, most of the people. And when I told him that this was a city, he said that his, where his home was, that that was called a gathering. And uh, again, he told me not to be frightened, which I was. I was, I was very frightened. And as far as I can understand, this was all mental. There was no spoken words from him. I knew what he was asking me. But yet he stood there and his mouth did not move. He had a smile on his face. He was he appeared very courteous and friendly. And that was uh, direct audio from the interview that uh, Woodrow gave uh, about his encounter with Ingrid Cole. 
there's a lot of people that uh, that think that the the Men in Black are some sort of intelligence organization, part of possibly Air Force intelligence, and they're just like a very specialized group. That's a possibility. Other people think that uh, they are actually aliens from uh, a faraway galaxy, and they they come down to intimidate uh, UFO uh, abductees and witnesses to scare them off, so they don't tell tell people about what's going on. Uh, and then there are people that think that is a multi it's a multi-tiered organization that is a, that has occult like practices and then that are uh, within the organization there are some that are human there are some that are women and then there are other others that are kind of almost uh, I don't want to use the word demonic but uh, to a certain degree maybe they're of a different plane uh, dark, the dark journalist on uh, YouTube thinks that they're maybe from the astral plane. And he, he comes to that from various sources of uh, people who tend to be into the occult and into this kind of stuff, maybe bring some of that element into their life. Um, in the book, Secret Rituals of the Men in Black, uh, written by, I think, Alan Greenwich, if I remember the, the, the t- his uh, name correctly, um, he goes pretty deep into the occult practices of the men in black. It goes back to Aleister Crawley and involves like the Knights of Malta. And it is like a multi-tiered organization meant to be the keepers of this kind of technology. That the, the technology that the UFOs that we see flying around, or at least reports uh, that are flying around, that, that technology is so powerful It needs to be kept very secret, and they'll do anything in order to do that. They'll intimidate witnesses. They'll use hypnosis. They will kill people. They will do anything it takes to maintain secrecy around genuine elements of disinformation, managed information, managed leaks to get out there. But that's a coordinated effort to make sure that only people... Uh, who read that kind of stuff, well, they're just getting like a little slice of the story. And that's the story that they want you to know. It's um, multifaceted and it's hard to wrap your head around um, what that's all about. Now, there's some other little tidbits here uh, concerning Men in Black. Um, Like David Bowie uh, in the movie The Man Who Fell to Earth. It's uh, reported that he uh, dressed himself after the reported Men in Black, which there were stories out at the time. And was kind of like a uh, fairly well known within the the UFO community. Uh, Philip K. Dick, his wife, uh, if I read correctly, claims that Men in Black tried to kill him, Philip K. Dick, with hypnosis and sleeping pills. Uh, Dan Aykroyd claims to have seen Men in Black. Exactly the same experience at exactly the same time, in exactly the same circumstances. It begins to make me wonder you know, what you know what sort of external force came into play there to cause this to happen. Something the three of us um, never forgot. We've never forgotten that. So there you go. That is just a, a a little overview of a different type of man in black encounter. Um, the way it's portrayed there is kind of demonic, uh, of a different dimension, of a different realm, just appearing, saying, "Hey." Uh, you better uh, shut the hell up with what you're researching. Just drop it, leave it alone, move on. Don't talk about it. So, uh, fascinating stuff. I, I'm not even like this is just scratching the surface. If you want to join the Slack or Discord, give us an email at ourbigdumbmouth at gmail.com. Check out obdmpod.com for all the social media and donation links. Be a part of the magic.